What's up everyone? Welcome back to another review and this time we're taking a look at When a Stranger Calls directed by Fred Walton. Okay, so the overall plot line of this movie is as follows. This young girl named Jill is being terrorized by a mysterious killer. She later finds out that the calls that, are, that she's been receiving all night are coming, from, are coming from with inside the house. It's revealed that the killer was inside the house the whole time and that he, and that he had murdered the two children that Jill was babysitting hours before hours earlier flash forward seven years later the same dude is now stalking another girl uh stuff happens where he where uh where he runs away and flees just to find himself back tormenting jill one last time all the while you have this detective who has been trying to hunt him down so yeah that's the overall story of this movie and i'm just gonna say this <clears throat> so this film is often noted of having probably one of the best 23 minutes in all of horror cinema, which is the babysitter being stalked by the killer and the realization that the calls are coming from inside the house. Of course, this moment, this uh, portion of the film is largely inspired by an urban legend of basically the same ilk. <clears throat> uh, now, everyone says that the first 23 minutes of this movie is probably one of the scariest 23 minutes of all horror cinema. and it's actually true like the first 23 minutes of this movie is really good like like very very good from a acting standpoint Carol Kane who plays a character who plays Jill I thought she was really good at playing at, at at portraying the the, uh, the different levels of fear that she starts to experience and the fact that you don't really see the killer once the big once the big pop of him being inside the house happens adds another extra layer of mystery to it but the but the whole build up from start to finish like this movie hits the ground running with it with the first 23 minutes it doesn't st it doesn't let up at all it's tension it's nail biting the suspense is built beautifully and the payoff is done immaculately good shit but once that first 23 minutes happens the rest the middle portion of the movie to get to the climax it's it never lives up to that it never lives up to the first half of this movie the middle never ever gets to the point of the first 23 minutes and that's actually not good because for a horror movie you want to maintain that momentum but <clears throat> but in my view i think fred walton i think fred walton kind of wanted to do a different type of movie and he just needed a big hook to get to get going and then for like a good chunk of the film like the, like the next i want to say hour it becomes a it becomes a uh, it becomes a uh, a uh, it becomes a manhunt movie basically. Uh, one of the cops that was there at the scene, uh, named Clifford, he's he was he uh, he is being paid by the father of the of the dead kids to track down to track down the character of Duncan who was who was the, who was the killer and put an end to him. Basically, the a good chunk of the movie is just him just hunting down this guy. And using this other woman named Tracy as bait, since she and Duncan had a uh, had a brief uh, meeting earlier on. Now, uh, <clears throat> now uh, Clifford uses her to to get Duncan, in which he comes very very close until Duncan slips away out of his fingers. And then the middle part, then the last half of the movie, like the last I want to say twenty minutes, brings back the character of Jill, and it tries to recreate the opening, but it doesn't come close to having that nail in the biting suspense <clears throat> i think fred walton knew what he wanted to do at the beginning of this movie and he knew what he wanted to do at the end of this movie that kind of have the character of jill bookend it but that middle portion of the movie carol kane disappears and it's basically a detective movie and it feels like you're watching something totally different it feels like you're watching a new war thriller and not a horror movie anymore and I ain't gonna lie <clears throat> there's nothing wrong with the middle section of the movie it's okay it's nothing all that it's nothing spectacular you do have some decent moments of suspense here and there but it doesn't really but like again it kind of goes against what it kind of like it kind of presents like this uh a shift in focus if you will and then it tries to be a horror movie again in, in the end and it comes across as just you know hey we just gotta wrap this up <clears throat> Now, does that make the film overall bad? No, it doesn't. At the end of the day, 
I think every single actor in this movie puts on a good performance. I think Charles Durning as the PI, I like him and I like him. I thought he was really, really good. Carol Kane as Jill Johnson. Uh, she was fine. She was great too. I like her as as the character of Jill. She was great in the first 23 minutes and she was good in the last half of the movie too when, when, her, when her character comes back now, mar now married with her own kiss, kids, suffering from PTSD when she gets a phone call while having dinner. <clears throat> I thought Cal Kane played it great. She was really good. Uh, the actress who played Tracy, I thought she was fine too. And um, the guy, who, I, forgot, I forgot the actor's name who played uh, who played uh, who played uh, Duncan, who was the killer. He was good in his. He was good as well. He comes across as you know. He comes across as just like this very um, as this very creepy dude. <clears throat> and I thought he pulled. And I thought the actor pulled it off really, really well. Well, like I said, the first like the. The beginning and the end are the best parts of this movie. Though everything else in the middle, it's fine for what it is if you want to watch a good detective story. But for a horror movie, eh, not really. <clears throat> uh, in terms of Fred Walton's... i say this. The direction is fine all throughout the film. Like, like the movie never... never ha is The movie's not... The movie's very competently made. Like, it looks really, really good. And you do have a lot of moments where Fred Walton really knows how to create suspense and create tension. He does that in the first. He does that in the opening. He does that with a couple of scenes of the character of Tracy walking through the streets of Long a Los Angeles alone, and it's done really, really well. And it really ranches up that creep, that creepy factor. And you do have some moments too where she's alone in her house, and and it's and it's revealed that uh, that Duncan is is there with her too. That stuff is good too. That stuff's great actually. And of course, the last twenty minutes when Carol Kane comes back, that's also pretty decent stuff as well. So like the directing all around is fine. Cinematography is good. <clears throat> but I think this movie's biggest this movie's biggest complaint I have is that the story. Like the story has a hot start, and then once you go to the middle, it turns into something else. And it's it's and it's not even half as interesting as what you're getting in the beginning and what you get in the end. And that's basically all I got to say about this film. When all said and done, I'm going to give it a solid 5 out of 10. So yeah, those are my thoughts on When a Stranger Calls. Let me know yours in the comment sections down below. Like the video and subscribe. And I'll check you back next time for more.